This is Michael McKeon, a.k.a. Morris Fletcher, a.k.a. Chuck McGill. You know who I am. But it's time for Inside the Gilliverse with Eric Broadbent. You're watching Inside the Gilliverse, talking all things Breaking Bad, El Camino, and Better Call Saul. Brought to you by Stewart Travel Guitars. See the incredible stowaway travel guitar at stewartguitars.com. Also brought to you by Idea Bench, makers of hot rod inspired pedal boards and pedal board accessories at ideabench.com. Microphones for Inside the Gilliverse are brought to you by Rode Microphones. Now, please welcome your host, Eric Broadbent. I'm on. You are on. Good evening, yeah. everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for episode 12 of Inside the Gilliverse, where we talk all things Breaking Bad, El Camino, and Better Call Saul. My name is Eric Broadbent, and it comes with extreme, and I mean extreme, underlined, accented, accent, whatever we can do to accent that, extreme pleasure to welcome from Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul, my favorite movie of all times, take away Star Wars, take away all of that stuff, Scarface, Ray Donovan, which I have not seen yet, I apologize, but the great actor, Steve, I'm going to, uh, Stephen Bauer, Stephen, how are you, my friend? I'm great, man. Thank you. It's such an honor to be on your show. Oh, thank you as well, too. This is something I, I started to tell you a little bit of the story, and I'll tell you later in the program why Scarface was so important to me. And I know we've got some of our friend, uh, friends and channel members in here that this love you from that movie and other programs as well, too. And I promised I would tell the story why that movie is so important to me. And later on, what I, what I realized, you know, Scarface has this brick and bad connection, too. Like, you know, how Walter White goes from Mr. Chips to Scarface, you know, that kind of stuff. Oh, you yeah. know, that kind of stuff. But listen, fantastic. That's- Gilligan's, that's Gilligan's sense of humor. I know, right? Before we jump into questions, we have a million questions from the fans. I have a couple for you as well, too. We have a birthday celebration in the house. One of our regulars here that joins us all the time. I think her birthday was last night, but her name is Marion. She goes by Marion Art. She's a phenomenal artist, um, but any, I'm not sure where she lives. But she, yeah. her name is Marion. Would we have a chance to maybe have a happy birthday wish for Marion? Do you... Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Marion. Happy birthday to you. And I mean that. Beautiful. That was absolutely awesome. That was awesome. We're getting some nice comments already. <laughs> People are loving the smile. Uh, the, the ladies are loving this tonight, for sure, as well, too. Uh, and we, we got questions right off the hop. So first of all, this is fantastic. Everything is looking good technology-wise. A big thank you to Julie, uh, who helped put this together tonight as well, too. She, I know she's watching. We're texting back and forth. So here is one from one of our channel members, Karina. And she asks, uh, since Vin- Vince Gilligan was such a huge fan of Scarface, was he actually the one that approached you about the role of Don Eladio, and did you say yes right away? Yes and yes. Nice. <laughs> yes, uh, and actually, it was, um, it was such a such a moment of of pride and 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 surprise also because I had been watching Breaking Bad, and I did, you know, I mean, I was aware of this of the similarities in tone and humor and i always wondered about it and i thought god how come i'm not on that show <laughs> you know i mean my buddy my buddy danny trejo was on i mean so many of my friends were on and i thought what do i have to do mm-hmm. and suddenly out of the blue gilligan calls calls my agents i guess and, and he says i have a role for steven tell him i'm a big fan and so I look at this role and I say, okay, cartel guy, you know, <laughs> you know all right. But um, I'm sure he's going to, it'll be with a twist, right? But the worst thing is this, or the, or the funniest thing is this, is that I went to Albuquerque and I had my fitting on the day I arrived. And they said, well, he wants you in a track suit. I said tracksuit, and and they said he said and they said to me the girls the the ladies of costume and they said, um, well we prefer this one you probably like this one the best the blue one the light blue one I said yeah yeah I absolutely I'm good with that 
And they go, oh, but he also wants to see you in this one. And it was Canary Yellow. Oh. <laughs> if you remember correctly. Yeah. And that wouldn't be the so, right choice, right? Normally for you, probably. So they had to take Polaroids of both. I had to try on both. And I said, mm, you know, like tried to make it look bad. Tried to make the yellow look terrible. Like uh, I look terrible in yellow. I've never won in my life. And <laughs> the next day they go, Sorry, <laughs> he chose the yellow. Oh no. <laughs> that's that'll give you that's a you know, like a microscopic indication of who Vince Gilligan is. Yeah. Well that, that's great. Years later, uh, I'm gonna interrupt you. No, no, you no, I interrupt you. Years Sorry. later, years later, he brought me back on Better Call Saul and he said, Well, this is ten years earlier, so you know, you have to look good. So I was slim and fit and then and then i saw the script and it says don Eladio is in a speedo oh jeez and he dives into his pool i'm like come on guys man. you're such a bastard <laughs> he's great yeah. man he's great that's why it works so well that's why all that stuff it like drives the audience crazy yeah go ahead you no, I was going to say, you should say to Vince, okay, Vince, you put on the speedo and jump in the pool. If you do it, I'll do it. Oh, yeah, yeah, I should have. I should have, <laughs> but, you know, I, I couldn't find him. Yeah, I know he's quite quite the busy man. But well, they did heat the pool up. It was like 50 degrees in oh. Albuquerque. You know, it gets cold there. Yeah. And it was like blazing sunshine and like 50 degree water. So they knew this in advance. So they start, they brought all these like heavy machines, you know, all the heavy machinery to heat up the pool. So when I arrive on the set, I'm like, it's freezing. And they go, it's okay. We've been heating the pool all night. Yeah. Because the last thing you want to do, I mean, not to get too graphic here, but the last thing you want to do is jump into a pool with a Speedo at 50 degrees. Right. Uh, not to get too graphic. <laughs> I'm in Canada, so our weather here, our pool, like I like, we don't have it heated. And if it's not 78, 80 degrees, you know. You wear I, baggy shorts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All the time. Of course. <laughs> yeah. I don't like that cold water. But it's, no, it's so cool. It's so cool no. that Vince reached out to you. And, and as we know from uh, some interviews that Vince has done, he's been on the show as well, too. But, you know, he talked about when he's writing the pilot for Breaking Bad. And, you know, he's always back in the X-Files days, you know, he always working with Brian Cranston. He's always thinking oh, someday in the future, I want to do something and have Brian Cranston involved in it. And sure enough, he's writing the pilot and wasn't even really necessarily sure yet who's going to be that guy. Really? And, yeah. Right. And he's ha- thinking of Walter, Walter White. So it's very, very cool. I mean, Br- uh, Brian Cranston, it's so cool that he's thought of you and you nailed that part as well, too. I mean, he really was like saving, you know, he was saving that you know that part of the show and and it was and the weird thing is that you know like when when people say ask me that they'll they'll ask me they'll say well what where were you and uh, and i said well season four episode eight and ten but they're ten years apart so the first one is when gus shows up with his protege yeah wait i need to make up yeah protege yeah friend or whatever you want to call him friend, Part- life yeah. partner life partner right and uh and and i have him killed mm-hmm. like just dispense with him and i say to gus i know who you are that's why i didn't kill you because <laughs> i know who you are right yep and, it, and it's so great and i think thomas schnauz directed that episode isn't Tom great? He's so great. I, I was just, I was knocked out because I never, you know, I've obviously never met him before. Yeah. But he was so good. And the DP, oh my God, everybody on that, on that crew, just they're on it. They are on point all day. And the other thing was great about that. I know you've got a lot of questions. No, but take I, your time, I, please, I, please. I'm, you know, you're, 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 setting me off um <laughs> my memory and jonathan banks was my partner when i took over for kenny wall in wise guy in okay 1990 
Yeah. In Miami. And I met John, John Banks, and, and an amazing person. Just an amazingly good soul. And he saw me for the first time in a long time. Much later. Yeah. And Breaking Bad. And he's there, Mike. And Mike is just, for me, he's just... Uh, I love Mike. He's a great. <laughs> I, I'd make bumper stickers if I could. I love Mike. <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, and I'm standing and I'm doing my scene with Gus with with uh, and Giancarlo and I were on stage. Uh, I'll tell you later. Yeah. Giancarlo and I had been on stage in 1985 off Broadway in a play that John Malkovich directed. Balm and Gilead. Okay. So John Carl and I were friends through the years and had met. But here here we are and I'm I'm helping him with his Spanish and but I'm joking the whole time because I'm Don Eladio. <laughs> Don Eladio likes to you know, he likes to joke. And so I did something really it was pretty funny. And Mike standing over there. The second episode I did, the one that takes place in the present, the first one takes place in the past. And this is where he brings Aaron, where he brings um, Jesse Pinkman. Dude. Yeah. Yep. And uh, and he says, and he says, no, he can't drink. He's an addict. Right. And we're doing all that stuff. And out of the blue from over there by the pool, I hear Mike, Jonathan Banks, he goes, he goes, and everybody cracked up. I had done something that, you know, I was improvising sure. a lot. And, uh, and, and and out of the blue comes this voice like that, you know, Jonathan, Jonathan. And he says, Stephen, you're beautiful. <laughs> I can picture that. Yeah, he's <laughs> just picturing that. Says, See, Bauer, you're beautiful. He said, Bauer, nice. Bauer, you're beautiful. And I said, Oh, thank you. <laughs> He's my old partner and wise guy. Isn't that something I else? Read. And to have a compliment from someone like, I mean, everybody, everybody loves Jonathan Banks on set. I mean, everybody. Everybody, right? Yeah. And you and, meant- and the audience and, and, and the audience. I mean, the fans. How could you not love Mike? Mike is it. Mike delivers one of the most beautiful and like perfect lines. Of course, the writing is. Oh, the best. Yeah, the best. Huge. When 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 Brian when uh, when Walt White goes to kill Gus, and he's got a gun on his lap in the car, and he gets out of the car in the snow, right? Yep. And he walks toward Gus's house, and he gets and the phone rings. Walt, what are you doing? You remember? Yeah. Remember and. And he answers and he goes, well, yeah, it's Mike. And he, goes, and he goes, Walt, get back in your car and go home. Go home. I, Mike was always there. I mean, he's good, right? He's that chameleon that just blends into everything. I mean, you, you got to love him for sure. We, uh, we have some awesome Super Chat questions coming in as well, too. We have Great. one from uh, Price of Reason. Uh, it says, Stephen, huge fan of your work on Scarface, Breaking Bad, and Better Call Saul, plus watched all of Ray Donovan, uh, all yeah. of your Wise Guys episodes and Skateboard. So this is more of a statement. And uh, and the Skateboard movie is Christian Slater. Uh, here is a question from Nat Romero. Could you talk about how cold it was on the scene? Where you Okay, so the swimming pool. So yes, you've already mentioned that. So that's a little bit delayed. She's asking about the, the swimming pool and how cold it was on the scene. Uh, we appreciate the dedication. So you've already answered that. Uh, Urban says, thank you for being here, Stephen. Um, who would you want to play in a film? Oh, oh, someone played a, a, you, like a, like a documentary on you. An actor would portray you. Who would you like to see portray you in a documentary on you? Justin Bieber. Hey, Canadian! There, I'll take it. <laughs> but in a, but maybe not. I'm assuming you're maybe kidding. No, I mean he's lonely. Um, uh, uh, I I don't know the young studs out there. I I really don't. You know, many many years ago, yeah, I used to. I was trained by this guy Jackson Souza, and um, from Boston, and. Jackson, years later, 
caught up with me and he said, you know, I've been training Rob Lowe and I call him little Steven. Oh, wow. Uh, and then, and Rob and I over the years have gotten to know each other. It's great. He's, he's a sweetheart. Great guy. Good actor too. I'm a fan really of Rob. Good actor. Yeah. I'm a fan. And, and uh, hopefully I, I'd love to work with him again. That'd be great. Um, so, so Jackson, um, told me that he had all the mannerisms that I had. But now, who who am I to choose? I Justin know. Bieber. Okay, why not? Yeah, he's he's done a, a full uh, kind I'm of remodeling, connect. rebranding. He's, he's yeah, he looks- No, you know what? Honestly, just, just being more serious, um, Justin probably would be fine. Um, I would say one of the young British actors. Okay. You know, yeah, because I I've been watching some of the stuff that comes um, down the the Netflix, you know, pike, mm-hmm. and the British actors are so well prepared. We watch a lot of it here now. It's a lot of British TV. The wife Sandra, she loves British TV, and these guys get the American accent. Oh, like, I nail it! Look at Rick from The Walking Dead. You know, Andrew Lincoln, second nature, right? You know, yeah. I mean, it's amazing. They they are. Um, I'm watching uh, right now. We were watching. Oh God, the other night, this movie Ophelia with Clive Owen. I got to meet Clive Owen. Nice. Finally. I haven't seen it uh, yet. In in England. Um, but um, he's great. But all the kids in it. The kid from 1917. He's in it, and he plays Hamlet. Wow. And the girls, Sarah, um, Sarah, what's her name? Um, anyway, those are, they're all great. And also Naomi Watts, who was married to Liev. There you go, and right. Children, and I met her, and she's wonderful. Oh, man. Yeah. My life is like a patchwork of, of, um, of, relationships and and crossings with people it's it's beautiful wait, right wait till, wait till you read my book that's all oh, i can't do you have you have a book i didn't know about your book not yet okay it's coming it's coming nice some memoirs of the years nice that'll be looking oh my gosh that's gonna be good that's gonna be really good i know a lot of us are looking forward to it uh this was a question earlier in the in the program dave wants to know are you are you in florida no i'm in los angeles, los angeles. i'm in hollywood actually okay where there's crime around every corner <laughs> and you know we have to deal with it until we can get out um my my fiance and i she saved my life yeah miss jennifer brennan she's got a company called hollywood groomer girl dot com okay hollywood groomer girl and she is the best groomer the best dog groomer oh nice in LA. nice and so it's a little bit hard for her to just drop her clients and move. We want to move to Nevada because it's nice and dry mm-hmm. and there's no state tax. Oh, okay. And California is killing me, killing her. Yeah. I- so that's where we're headed. You know, it's the opposite of uh, the Beverly Hillbillies. Oh, California. I know. Yeah, I'm moving the other way. So we loaded up a truck and it moved to Beverly I even saw today on Twitter, uh, or actually, yeah, th- it was a Twitter, I believe it was, Gene Simmons. I mean, I'm, I'm a big Kiss fan, and Gene Simmons. I, if, I know Gene. Yeah, nice. He's he's lived in their beautiful home. I mean, a, a tw- he's put their home up for sale, $22 million estate, uh, because he wants to get out of there. The taxes are too high, and they're, and they're just, you know, kind of things are going to hell a little bit. And he's, I'm not sure where they're planning on moving, but he, you know, Gene Simmons has planted his feet there for a long time. But I, he- I know Gene. I know Gene, and I, I know about that, and... He's a he's a bright guy, and unfortunately, California has turned a certain direction that is not really it's not really good for the people the, the people who live here, mm-hmm. and, and and it's not changing. Yeah, it's, I know, right? It's not changing. We have a we have a governor, and we have a mayor in LA, and. <laughs> They, they're in power. You yeah. Know? They they wield a very strong hand. 
Yeah. So it's sad to it's see that for sure. Yeah. It's all right. We're going to move to Vegas, and you know, but not Las Vegas. And we're going to move to uh, Henderson, Nevada, okay. and get a nice house and have our dogs and maybe nice. an alpaca or two. Hey, nothing wrong with that. We love alpacas. It, this is funny. You talked about Tom Schnauz earlier, Tom, and I'm not sure if you know this. Tom was a co-host here on the show for for ten episodes. I reached out to Tom uh, way back, well, about, a, I don't know, three, three or four months, two months ago, three months ago, something like that. I said, hey, Tom, how'd you like to come on the show as a co-host? He had already been on the show, and I talked him into it. I twisted his arm really hard, and he came on the show. He said, Prom- I, we agreed on four episodes. He did 10, which is great, but it was, wow. so, it was so nice. Every week, he, his mom was watching. Now, I don't know, she might still be watching, so hello, Mrs. Schnoz. Uh, I, uh, I hope you're well, if, she, if she's still watching. But he started this thing. And this is a question coming in from Lori. She's asking this question to you. So in the Gilliverse, the Gilliverse is this imaginary place where we go off into this rocket ship and everything exists, Breaking Bad, El Camino, Better Call Saul, in this environment. Instead of saying the Breaking Bad universe, we start saying Gilliverse. And apparently there, <coughs> there is a smell, okay? There is a scent. If, it's a, if there's a Gilliverse candle, it has a scent. And we always like to ask questions. And Tom is one who said what the answer is. And I'll tell you what the real answer is in a minute. It smells like a couple <laughs> things. Couple of smells. You, like, bless you. It smells like a couple things in the Gilliverse. What would you think from the outside looking in? What would it smell like in the Gilliverse? That's from Lori. Hmm. Well, I'm a fan of candles, and my son is a. One of my sons is a. He's a candle maker, and uh, for different occasions, he's a mystic. I would say that the Gillivers would smell a little bit acrid, um, but also uh, appealing. Uh, it also would smell good, just a little bit of a burn in your nose. Okay. Well, there's been some really good answers. There's, I guess there's there are right answers and wrong answers. When I first guessed... I guess, like, you know, uh, Saul Goodman, Jimmy McGill always wanted to have a Coca Bolo wood desk. And so I thought, so I said to Tom, I said, I think it's going to smell like Coca Bolo in the Gilliverse. We asked Vince Gilligan. <laughs> I'm not familiar with Coca Bolo. Neither am I. Neither am I. Just from watching the show, we asked Vince Gilligan. Oh, oh Coca Bolo. Yeah. Some kind of uh, exotic wood, right? I've never seen it or, or smelt it. But. Um. I did many years ago when I was working with the DEA and I was playing a character, a, a Kiki Camarena. I did. They let me smell what that. Okay. That smells like. Yeah. Yeah. It's different. It's, yeah. 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 It, I mean, there's this it was cedar has a, has a nice smell. Maple has a nice smell. A smell. You can recognize oh. those. But the true yeah. word is bacon and fear. Uh, bacon's too strong. <laughs> Bacon, 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 like obliterates everything else. It does. Like if you lay bacon around, I'm like the dogs in that commercial, you know. Bacon, 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 bacon. Yeah, bacon, I know. Bacon. I know. And here in Canada, that's what I don't usually eat, eat bacon. I mean, and I, I'm not a bacon fan for years, but I'm not against it. That's right. It's one of those things where if it's if it's given to you, you're not going to certainly turn it away, are you? Right. That's right. 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 Here's a question from Pinterest Fail Mom. She says, what is something you like about your character in Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul? Was there something that you took away from uh, those shows? And who know, hopefully we'll see you again in season six. But is there something that was really memorable for you uh, from both shows? Memorable? Yeah. Something that you like about your character. There's a lot yeah? that I like about Don Eladio. Um I'm just going for transparency. I'm just going to say... I've never thought about killing or having anyone killed. But other than that, there are similarities between Stephen Bauer and Don Eladio. And there are are more than a few. I enjoy mental or just word games. Mm -hmm. I like to, I like to, put people on just for humor, Mm -hmm. not for long. You know, I don't, I'm not a pun guy. Uh, I'm not a prank guy, by the way, because I heard a lot about that, you know, years ago that there's people who prank people or who pug people. I'm not, I'm too, I'm too, I'm too much of a wuss too, and too much of a, 
a, a lover of, of mankind to get into pranks. Right. But for a moment, I can do some. I can, you know, I can just, you know, do something and say, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. I was kidding. It's only I don't I don't understand English. So I sometimes mispronounce the word. So that's what I love about Don Eladio. I love that. And I also love that he has power and I don't. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. What's so scary you know about I mean? Yeah, I do. What's so scary about him as well, too. I mean, that that's with these with these powerful, you know, people in the cartels and things of that nature. Like they're, there's, you know, just when they smile and kiss you is a, the chance that you're probably going to be killed. You never know. There's always that scare factor. And you really pulled that off, you know, and especially thank when. You, thank you. Thank you. You've watched a lot of the of the documentaries about Pablo. Oh, I've watched so much. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and how his personality, how how he was most of the time. But when it came to business, business, yep. he made his decisions very cold. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's it's funny. Uh, my, my my wife here, Sandra, she's a little bit behind in Better Call Saul. She's seen all of Breaking Bad maybe a couple times, and she's a little bit behind really? in Better Call Saul. So I, I showed her just a bit of a scene of, uh, you know, Lalo, you know, coming down uh, to down to Mexico and bringing the money, amazing. whatever. Amazing. That guy's amazing. Isn't he great? I mean, I love him. Yeah. What a find. Tony, huh? Tony was great. And obviously we're going to be looking forward to seeing where it picks up in season six after that big cliffhanger and, and season five. But, you know, he brings the car and I love your Magnum PI. You know, that was great. You know, we all, we associate that car with that. I know PI. Yeah. But here's a question <laughs> from who this coming. This was from Karina and we're talking about it. So there's no trunk in the, in the Ferrari. It's in the front. So it's a frunk. And Karina says, how often do people come up and yell frunk at you? Does that ever happen? Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> um, and, and you know what? It, it had been a few months, so I'd forgotten and I, and it hadn't aired yet. And some guy was like texting me and he goes, Frank, that's fantastic. And I said, what are you talking about? And he's like, did you not see the show tonight? And I said, not yet. I'm three hours behind. Right. Yeah. And he, uh, he said, Frank is uh, what you say in the show. And I'm thinking back and I go, wow, I wonder if I made that up or, <laughs> or if it was or if it was written. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Frank, right? Hey, Frank, you whatever. Yeah, that's that's hilarious. Uh, Urban says, how do you react when people recognize you? Do they rush up to you? Or are they a little nervous around you or do you get a combination, a little bit of everything of that? Most people are polite. Nice. E even those who um, standing in line at TSA. Yeah. And I'm talking, you know, to my beloved and and some guy from behind in an accent will say, uh, excuse me, uh, are you really Israeli? And I'll say, what? And he goes, you're Avi, right? Yeah. Are you Avi? And I said, yeah. And he goes, are you Israeli for real? And I said, no, man, I just, I've been there. <laughs> yeah, and I listen, and, and I know a bunch of L.A. Israelis, and so that's me. I just cop that. Yeah, and and it, again through the years, the craziest ones are really the scarfing ones. <laughs> you know, some of them are not that polite. Yeah, they're they're just like wow, you know, like wow, right on top of me, or they get really physical. Wah! Yeah, that's a little weird. Yeah, grabbing my arm and they're saying Manolo yeah you know it's, that's crazy or they'll come up or they'll run up on me like having dinner mm -hmm. in a restaurant and go sorry excuse me sorry 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 everybody sorry oh you're Manolo aren't you yeah and then the worst is when they go Manolo just can you just do me a favor and can you like do your tongue thing For my girlfriend? Oh, Jesus. Gonna, for your girlfriend? Uh, that's not really appropriate. <laughs> no. And in fact, if, if I need to do it, you're not doing it proper. <laughs> exactly. And I know I know what he means there as well, too, without getting too graphic there. But I exactly. And that's the thing. When I meet celebrities, 
in person. I'm like, a lot of times I'm like, oh, I would love to go say hi, but no, no, no. And someone will say, go say hi, go say hi. I'm like, no, no, they're either with their kids or whatever, you know, and they can maybe wave or something like that. And then maybe if the celebrity says, you know, come here for a second, then I'll approach them. But I, I really respect people's privacy. And, and especially during well, dinner, I mean, you don't you do that. Have to. Listen, Eric, when I was, when I came to Hollywood, I was, I was, you know, a young actor mm -hmm. and I was starting out. And when I saw people that I admired, I mean, I, I would tiptoe up to them. Maybe, maybe I might just choose to like go, no, no, I don't think, no, I don't. Yeah, chicken out. I'm not going to do, I'm not gonna do that. Yeah. But when I was young, I was 21 years old, I was here in L.A., and somebody invited me to, to, like, first row seats to see a play called The First Monday in October. And it starred Henry Fonda. Oh, wow. Absolutely yeah. amazing. A and Golden I, Pond. And I was such a fan. I mean, I loved him from afar. Mm -hmm. Right? And... And there I was watching him on stage and he was older and he was, he was not Henry Fonda from the movies, yeah. except on Golden Pond, Be brilliant. Where, what, where he plays, he's, he's older, mm -hmm. but this is about the same time and I'm watching him through the play and it's a matinee. So it's at the Huntington Hartford, which is now renamed the Henry Fonda theater. Isn't that beautiful? Wow, yeah. you're there front row. I, and, just... and, and I'm front row, and I go off to, and I leave the when the thing's over, the show's over, and I go, and I'm thinking, where's backstage? I've got to say something to him. I've got to say something. So I'm, I go, they say, well, that's the stage door. And there's a few, like, older ladies and stuff there, and an older man walks out. He's a little guy he's like old mm -hmm. and he opens the door and he goes yeah and i go uh is it possible to see mr fonda and he goes hang on a sec closes the door he goes back inside comes back out and he goes all right come on in come on in and i walk in and it's his dressing room right there hmm. and he's squashing his hands on his face and he's used his towel and he turns to me, and he was taller than me. Mm -hmm. And I'm 6'2". Ooh, <laughs> I didn't realize he was that tall. He turned to me, and he goes, yeah. I said, I... Uh, you couldn't find the words. <laughs> I, I'm an actor, and I love you. <laughs> he said, well, thank you. Thank you. He goes, what are you doing now? And I said, I'm studying. I'm studying. He goes, keep studying. I go, God, you are, you're everything. <laughs> I said, thank you. Thank you. And he was like, he was so humble, so humble. Years later, I would get to know his son, Peter, before he passed. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? And that's something we can put uh, into perspective. My story, no, my I, story about Hollywood, I, I mean, I came from Cuba to Miami. And from the University of Miami, I jumped to Hollywood. I have a good Cuban question coming up in just a second as well, too. But sure. something, something I want to put into perspective here for a quick second is how a lot of us watching right now, like, first of all, I'm a major fan of you. I'm a major fan of everyone that we interview every week. But at the same time, you know, you, just like the story you told of Henry, you're a massive fan of him. So we all have our idols, you know, right? And it's, it's so at the end of the day, you know, we all put on our pants the same way. We, address, yep. we lace our shoes the same way. You know, yep. just some of us are, have g great gifts of being in film or in music productions and things of that nature. Um, here's a good question about Cuba. And I had this written down earlier, and I feel very, very bad I didn't ask it earlier. This is from Elizabeth Coleman. She asks, um, she uh, Elizabeth Coleman, she says, have you ever been to the Havana Film Festival? She has a friend that lives no. in Cuba. Never been there? Yeah. The answer is no. And, and... Strangely enough, I was, I was sort of invited um, when I went to the Dominican Film Festival okay. years ago for a film, and a bunch of Cubans came up to me at a restaurant in an outdoor place. They all like crowded me, and they're like, "Yeah, you're you're you know that guy, and we know you, we know who you are." And yeah. Scarface is really big in Cuba, 
And I said, and and I'm like, you guys live there? And they're like, yeah, yeah, it's fine, it's fine. Don't listen to what they tell you in the United States. You should come. Yeah. You got to come. You got to come. In two months, we're having the Havana Film Fest. And I was like, yeah, but I don't know that I'll be, I don't know that I'll do well there because I'm such an American. You know, I am really Cuban in my soul, mm -hmm. but I'm an American. I really am. And I love the United States of America. And I don't know that everybody there loves the USA. Yeah, that's I know true. You might admire it. You might long for it, some of you. But you're still there. Yeah. You know, and and they're like, oh, don't buy the, you know, we do whatever we we do whatever we want. We get away with everything because we're artists. You should come. And, you know, I actually thought about that. I believe them because they're Cubans like me, mm -hmm. you know, so we got along great. And I said, I'll think about it. You know, let me see if I have a movie to bring there, you know, but at the same time. You're sleeping with the enemy. Yeah, I I know. I hear you. I think I, mean, I think the fact just with the with the the power of Scarface and the Cuban connection there, I think that you would still be a very very welcome. Uh, I want to go. Yeah. I really do. Eric. Well, there's still I time. Mean, something that's God. It's just you know when I meet other Cubans, they're like, yeah, I went there, you know, yep. and it was cool. And I'm like, ah, oh, God, I, I have to find a good reason. My my dad passed away, so he won't kick my ass. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Go. that's right well here in canada I, I even had an idea to shoot a documentary with him going back oh wow because his stories were so beautiful and would have been nice to capture mom's stories of you know how they met and and what it was like so i wanted to take him but he's like them yeah <laughs> I'm, not going, I'm not going there yeah. i'm not gonna go i'm not i'm an american now yeah not know? going back yeah yeah, that's that's a that's a good story. Those things are hard, you know. It's like the Soviet Union and yeah, or that's Hungarian. Right. Yeah, when you leave, you you you're usually leaving for a reason. So here's a question. This is from my better half, from Sandra Lee. She says she hears a bracelet, and because she loves jewelry, she'd wonder if you could show your bracelet that you may have. I have a bunch. There you go. A uh, couple of them are from Jen, uh, the silver one, and then this one when we drove to Vegas recently. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one's from my son, uh, Dylan, who, uh, and it's the kind you wrap twice. Okay. And it's a, it escapes my mind, but uh, it has some, some meaning. He's a mystic, you know, and um, it's some sort of uh, uh, occult thing. Okay. Or, um, good luck occult thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good, they, good save. They, they, they feel good. Yeah. And, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I like I like cool. I like how you said good occult thing. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Cool. Yeah, here's yeah, a, oh, he's totally into just positive, you know. Yeah, that's nice. He, he does a very very positive tarot okay. tarot card yeah, reading yeah. here. Nice. His name his uh, moniker is Mystic Dylan. Okay. Nice. Dot com. Okay, we'll look that up as he, well. Yes, he's quite a guy. Very very bright. Good. Good. And, uh, Great singer. He's a great, like, Broadway type singer, but he found his niche uh, here doing um, tarot readings and palm readings. Good. Well, yeah. that's good. Here's a super chat question. This goes back to Scarface again as well. So, this is from Price of Reason. He says, uh, Did you know Scarface would become an iconic classic while you were filming it? And were you surprised when it happened again when with Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul? So, both of these, these one was a movie, of course, and one one was uh, based for television, but they became this cult following. And maybe maybe right out of the get go, Scarface maybe didn't just like be a massive success. Maybe it was. I, I don't know the numbers. Uh, I know I love the show, but Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad still was slow at first, took off, especially uh, uh, Breaking Bad. Now we're at this, here again, using the word cult status. Did you ever envision either of these becoming that? that? Let's touch on Breaking Bad first. I remember that the the look forward to the first episode of Breaking Bad was something, and I remember it grabbed me right away, but I had to go to work, and I did not catch up till season three. Ooh. So I had to go back in time. Once Jen and I were together, I had to just school her on 
Breaking Bad from from the get go, mm-hmm. right? And we were ridiculous. I mean, she has to work in the morning. I don't usually, but she's got to get up. Yeah. And we're watching five episodes in one night, beginning at eleven. Ooh, that's late night into the morning. That's a late night. Mm-hmm. It's not fair, really. And no. I, oh gosh, she's a trooper, um, Miss Supergirl. She is, and. And uh, uh, but Scarface, Scarface, I used to discuss every day in Al's trailer, mm-hmm. you know, Pacino's trailer, because he would request that I come in, that I come to him after I was made up and ready to go. I came in, and that's the relationship we had. We were just Tony and Manning all the time. But when we were in the trailer. We're, we sound like Tony and Manny, like we're talking like this, you know, you know, and he's doing his thing, you know, he's doing, uh, he's still talking like, you know, like Montana, you know, and I'm like, oh, what are you doing here? But we're also incorporate our lives. Okay. So we could play Uno. <laughs> Uno, that was, that was our game. Okay. You know, he, goes, he goes, can I interest you in a game of Uno, <laughs> I would just be, to be a fly on the I wall. Mean, he's the sweetest. He's just the he's the sweetest, nicest, down to earth person. Person, you know, other than me on earth, <laughs> other than you, and you're quite humble too. We were we were made for each other. That I is- mean, literally. Come on, watch. You know, you see the movie. We were, you know, I know. And and that was that's why I was cast because the director felt that the producer felt that executive producer Marty Bregman felt that who knew Al and he said wait till we get you in front of Al then we can offer you yeah. that role we're sold but Al's got to see you and and I go oh my god and I hadn't met Al although he sat across from me he sat next to me at a dinner at an after show dinner in the village listen to this in the village when I went to see him in in um in American Buffalo okay and Somebody invited me to come to the after party at, at, a, at a restaurant in the village. I wish I remembered. But I sat here at the end of the table, and they added a table, and here he came and sat right there. Oh I never spoke to him. So three months later, I meet him. And he's like, hmm, everybody tells me, everybody tells me you're like, you're Cuban. You're really Cuban and everything. How come your name is Steve Bauer? It sounds like a fake name, right? <laughs> I go, I'm really Cuban. Yo soy cubano. Oye, yo soy cubano de verdad. And I, you know, my name was my dad's name, Echevarria. Echevarria, but it's a big name. It's not Garcia. It's not Lopez. Mm-hmm. I, most people couldn't spell it. So my dad, who was a pilot, and he had to deal with air traffic control. He said, change your name. Yeah. Take another of, your fam- of the family's name. Take your mother's side, Bauer. Oh, nice. From Germany. They're German Jews. Okay. Who came to Havana. Wow. I'm glad you shared the story with your dad being a pilot. My dad was an air- aircraft engineer and pilot, too. Really? Yeah, he taught me to fly. Did you go in? Yeah. I did. Yeah, me too. I learned to fly. I learned to fly. I stopped short. I got my, I got my, um, my written test. Mm -hmm. I got the, um, but I didn't solo because I was, I was in, uh, Miami Dade Community College doing a play and I just couldn't be bothered. I thought, I'm not going to be in, I'm not going to be an aviator. Yeah. You know, it's like, I love everything aviation. I know the history of aviation. Yeah. I'm a fanatic about the, the great pilots because he he in, imbued my brother and I with both with that love of those of those people, of those guys mm-hmm. and the RAF pilots and the Battle of Britain. Hey. And Wiley Wiley Post. 
I got I got to mention something because I know you'll appreciate this, and you're, I know your dad would appreciate this if he's still with us. You talk about the RAF. The other fellow that taught me to fly was the name is my dad's best friend, and my dad did work on his aircraft. His name was Jerry Billing. He was a World War II Spitfire pilot, an ace. Oh, Spitfire! Spitfire ace, and he would after the war actually in, in later years, probably you know t- t- two decades ago. He used to fly Cliff Robertson, the other uh, Hollywood actor. Cliff also, Ro- yeah, Cliff Robertson owned the Spit, one of the final Spitfires, and Jerry would fly his Spitfire at air shows. But he taught me how to do aerona- uh, aerobatics and all kinds of stuff. And I actually did my first solo illegally, even though this is going to be kept on the internet. I'm sure they can't come after me now. But uh, anyways, yeah, so fun aviation stories. But let's jump over to a couple other questions as well too. Um, Aya is saying. She would like us to bring on Lalo, Tony Dalton. Yes, we've reached out to Tony Dalton's uh, publicist. We'll hopefully get him on later down the Where show. Where is he? I don't know. I have no idea. I see nice Instagram posts, so he's enjoying life out there. Uh, Teresa asked, do you speak Spanish fluently? If not, you do a great job with the accent. Sí, si, yo hablo español perfecto. Hey, there you go. I have a bit of French uh, background, so sometimes if I'm in, you know, I can use a little bit of the French background to read a Spanish my, menu. Moi, je parle français aussi. My mother was a tremble, so I, I, she was a French. I, I got to really bring, I got to bring it back, and it's been a long no, time. Unfortunately, I don't speak German. My mom still speaks German because she was raised, you know, her her dad was a German. But uh, I, I learned French easy, like in high school. I took a class, and everybody said that I was funny, mm-hmm. you know, because I'm taking French. <laughs> And I and I was also in the chamber singers, so I was really questionable to the rest of the macho crowd. <laughs> so, but that was the seventies, you know. Yeah, of course. Um, they've they've forgiven me for now. They know I am a macho man. There you go. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit of credibility goes a long way. Uh, Lori says, uh, "Who was your favorite?" And this is this is a tough one. This is like picking a favorite child. But she says, "Who was your favorite actor to work with of all time?" Cliff Roberts, no, I didn't. <laughs> Al Pacino, maybe, or no? I've, I've... Uh, it would probably be Al. It would probably be Al. I loved, uh, I finally got to do some scenes with with John Voight, whom I love and I, I admire him. Yeah. John, I, I admired for years. And then I, I came to California. I came to LA and some girls took me, I don't know, I was takeable i guess okay. and they invited me to this party on wheels it was a roller skate party roller disco and in, in in the valley and i and i got there and the woman who ran the place helena who was a good friend of of jack nicholson and, and marlon Fernando. That's going to be in my book. So nice. she she liked me. She just liked my disposition. She said, you can come in. The girls, I don't know you guys. I don't know. The- <laughs> so I got a membership for life to this roller derby party and I roller roller uh, disco party. And I saw like in my first time there, Jim Brown, the great running back, one of my heroes, I saw. I saw Natalie Wood, whom I was just was to me when I was a kid, because uh, I saw because I saw um, West Side Story. Mm-hmm. It was my, one of my favorite movies, and she was there with Valerie Harper, also. Oh. and Diana Ross, and just the, and Jack Nicholson was there, but. John Voight was there. Oh, cool! And there was no there. They didn't serve alcohol or anything. Yeah, we just um, we just drank beverages and ate hot dogs and stuff and listened to really great music, and 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 went around you know the rink. But you met some great and you know, amazing people there. And I sat down by myself. I didn't know anybody. And here comes John Voight, and he talked to me. And I talked to him. I reminded of, I reminded him of this forty years. This is before I did Scarface. Okay. I was no one. Yeah, I was nobody. I was just tall, you know, swarthy guy. You know? <laughs> and and he gave me advice. 
So when we met years later, I reminded him of that moment. And he was like, yeah, I think I remember that. Yeah. So I finally got to, you know, and well, you haven't seen Ray Donovan, but when when I got cast in Ray Donovan, he plays, he's already cast and he plays Liev. Liev. Yep. Right? Yep. He plays Liev's dad. And I got to see him a lot and we'd run into each other and he'd talk to me. We'd talk about stuff. And, and he finally got put into a situation plot wise where he has to kill me. Mm -hmm. He has to put me, take me out and shoot me like a dog. Oh no. Yes. And I, in the trunk, I'm singing like Hebrew songs and he's going nuts. And he finally gets me out to Santa Clarita or somewhere, you know, out there. And he lets me out of the trunk and I'm, and I just like to try to talk him out of it. And I finally do. But that was our brilliant moment, our like our glowing moment together. Cause we were like toe to toe. Yeah. I'm playing Avi, you know, and I'm saying, hey, yeah. you know what? You kill me, you're next. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's it was, fantastic. It was a wonderful experience. It sounds like it. Here's a good question from Blazy Gardner. Now, this is something, this is a, a really neat question because she's asking about a, a favorite car. And we'll get to that in just a quick second. So a while back, and it's amazing how we we kind of, I don't want to say the word we stereotype people or we anticipate things, what we think. I had Michael Mando on the show for the second episode of Inside the Gilliverse. Great. And I'm thinking, um, oh, I love him, right? And, very, and, very serious guy. Yeah, and the women love him. You should have seen that night, man. It was crazy. My my YouTube analytics went from um, 100% male to like, uh, like it was crazy. The women demographic just went like this overnight. It was insane. No. And the same thing, things, same thing's gonna happen tonight. When I check the stats tomorrow after you've been on the show, it's gonna be insane. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so we're talking about cars, and I, I, I pictured like, you know, like Michael Mando driving like some Maserati or something like that. And and I, I certainly didn't mean to laugh because it wasn't disrespect. But I said, so well, what are you driving, right? Oh, I said, you know, when the show's all done, you can try and keep that car, Lalo's car, and yeah. I mean, sorry, Nacho's car. And he goes, I drive a Prius. And I kind of laughed, but then I, then he explained to me, he says, you know, it's the most economical car you can get. I mean, he's a very smart man. Last, he's a very smart and very serious yeah. guy. Too. And last week we had Lavelle Crawford on the show. And Lavelle was, I mean, he really drilled it into our heads about saving for a rainy day. And he was that guy that was saving for a rainy day. We didn't know COVID was coming. We didn't know a pandemic was coming, you know, and, you know, instead of buying like, you know, like the $3 million house, let's buy a $150,000 house and get a car that gets you from point A to point B. And that was very smart. But so this leads to the question that Blasey Gardner is asking. She says, Don Eladio gets a Magnum PI car as a gift from Lalo. What would you be your dream car? And now we can take away what I just said about saving for a rainy day. But if you had the choice, you don't have to worry about tomorrow. Uh, what would be your dream car? This could be a letdown to my fans. Um, I have never, ever, ever bought a flashy car. The flashiest car I've ever had was a 65 Mustang. Ooh. Fastback. But that's not flashy. That's badass. That's that's a, that's a bad... Muscle cars yeah, are bad. I mean, it, but I inherited it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I never, I never bought it. I never bought an expensive car. I think once I did, uh, actually, I, I did, <laughs> because I was married to Melanie Griffith. <clears throat> Excuse me. And... The BMW was very, very popular yeah, then. Yeah. And, but because we were expecting a baby, we got a four door. And it was a big, beautiful car. Like, mm -hmm. it was like a 530. <laughs> and it was a European edition. It was the Bav Bavarian Motorworks. And it was beautiful. And it had like, all these things, you know, that I just wasn't used to. Yeah, he had seen. I mean, I've him. had I've had BMWs after that, but they were old. I mean, I got like a a stick two thousand two, you know, nineteen seventy four. Oh, the coolest car I ever had, though. Actually, I got my dad bought it for himself because he was obsessed with with like race cars with beautiful cars. And 
and he loved the movie like I do, mm-hmm. a man and a woman, right? Mm-hmm. And the and they they race these like small cars and including a musket Mustang, actually the first Mustang. And but my dad got an Alfa Romeo spider Ooh. 1974 and he found that he was too big for it okay so he gave it to me and i was just starting my acting career or my studies at the university of miami so i would drive to the university of miami and my convertible and sometimes of course south florida would suddenly like hope the sky would open up and just drop water on you and it was the kind of it was the kind of top you know where you had to reach back oh. like and throw your arm out you know and like and pull it and yeah try to pull it but by then you're soaking wet too late so that was my favorite car the alfa romeo two two seater and it was silver or the black top nice well that's beautiful but i haven't bought, I haven't bought a, a fancy car since then i have a volkswagen passat that i've had for about six years, seven years. Nice. Another efficient car. Another very efficient car. Beautiful car. Yeah. Great car. Great car. Great car. It's my, it's my own. It, I, you know, yeah. that's my Mercedes. Yeah. I'll share one f- fast story here. I'm going to one last question. We'll be wrapping up. There's a, there's a YouTuber that my, I won't mention his name, but there's a YouTuber that my son followed and he got really famous really, really quick, really quick. And he went out and bought, and he's a, he was a young kid at the time, maybe 20 years old, went out and bought himself a Lamborghini and uh, then he went and bought a, a matching Lamborghini or a different color for his girlfriend, bought a, a nice house, a beautiful, beautiful home. And then they demonetized his YouTube channel. And, you know, no. yeah. And I mean, he was making bank, making like what some of Hollywood actors are making in good, in good films. Um, and that's the thing. I, I told my son, I said, that's not smart. That's not smart to do that. Like, you know, I know you you get this money thrown at you. And the first thing you want to do is go out and, and treat yourself. And get a job first. I know, right? Because, and yeah. I love YouTube. I love it. I plan on making YouTube. I do too. I, yeah. I'm up, you know. But it's not, I know, I know I got to have a nest egg. You know, I got to have a safety net, right? So be smart with it. But here's the last question and we'll let you fly. Uh, this is from Mrs. Ignacio. Ignacio Vargas says, what kind of research do you have to do to prepare for the role of Don Eladio? Research? Yeah. I mean, you, Scarface probably brought a lot of it. Was there any research at all? Did you get it? Did you? If, if, no. Come, None. None. I've known I've known those guys all my life in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. Um, I I brush past them, you know. I have always had very very nice and respectful relationships with those guys, with guys like Don Eladio. Um And you know we move on. Mm-hmm. They, they know where I am. I understand where they are and what they have to do Mm -hmm. and we move on and there's always humor and that's why Don Eladio is just consumed with like yeah oh for sure well his humor his humor and and just you know just clowning people sometimes he is a little bit mean uh, but I I met a lot of Don Eladios in my time I'm sure you have I didn't have to um and, and, you know, like I said earlier, the accent comes easy for me, especially if I've heard it once or twice. Yeah, he's just reciting and it. I, I definitely had heard it, you know, in my years in Hollywood, my early years in Hollywood. Man, I would come, in, especially after Scarface, I would come in contact with some scary people, <laughs> yeah. some scary dudes. Yep. And I was respectful and I gave them the time of day so that they never could say he's an asshole right important um i'm sorry i i i, I cursed <laughs> <laughs> that's okay it's all good no that's, that's... i try not to curse no that's i good. try not to curse in in real life yeah. i only curse on in the movies and television. yeah no you're good you're good it wasn't an f-bomb or anything like that so we're good so anyway those guys are real they exist and you don't have to go to you don't have to cross the border to find them. Yeah, yeah, they're there. That's right. They're here. They're working. Um, and I've been in places, you know, in in eateries <laughs> where suddenly some guy goes, my boss, he wants to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> 
And I'm like, I'll be right over to your table. <laughs> exactly. I'm coming there right now. I'm dropping what I'm doing. I, I don't blame you. Well, listen, so, this has been an absolutely fantastic night. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here as a lifetime fan of Scarface. Uh, I mean, I love Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. That's what this whole show is all about. But I just have to put, you know, uh, the, the emphasis where it was very important to me. Scarface is amazing. So thank you to have you here. A few other people like to thank here as well, too. We've got a lot of new things going on on the channel here. So we want to thank our, our channel members. We have a new channel membership here on the channel. Our Patreon supporters, our moderators in the channel, Sandra Lee, Ladybug, uh, Mark Taylor, everyone else that's helping there as well, too. Our... Eric, I'll give you another episode. Let's do another episode. You want to okay? do it? Because I'm, I know I talked a lot, That's and what sometimes we weren't really talking about the subjects that that the people out there, and to all you people who who were left waiting, mm -hmm. I'll be back. Oh, let's do it. We'll do. We'll look at um, late in November, early December, if you want to try that. Perfect. Perfect I'll, timing. I'll, I'm going. I'm going overseas. Okay. To shoot a movie, and I'll be back. And November, you know, Thanksgiving. Yeah. You know, I'll work it out with Julie. In oh. California, they've shut us down. We can't have Thanksgiving. Uh, yeah. I'll work it out with Julie. We're, we're, I'll be texting her right after the show. So right. big thanks to her as well, too. Uh, All right, brother. Next Friday night, we've got. Really uh, good at what you do. Thank you, sir. That, that okay? That okay? That's, I'm gonna have to watch that back because sometimes I'm hearing things come out of my ear. Sometimes it does go in one ear and out the other. Till I all this technology no, stuff. You no, know, as as De Niro says in in uh, you know analyze this. You're good. Wow. No, you're good. You're good. Okay. No, good. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. And I, I think All I can right. call you my friend. Right. We're gonna I'll say see you soon. God bless everybody. I'll say goodbye Thank to you off the air. Don't go away. I'll say goodbye to you off the air. Everyone, thank you so much. Check out our Instagram, Instagram.com slash inside the Gilliverse. We have a contest right now to win a Hector Salamanca bobblehead from Royal Bobbles. <laughs> yeah, ding, ding, ding. It's got the real things. Uh, and and bobbleheads.com. Check that out as well, too. Audio podcast from tonight's episode will be up tomorrow because I don't sleep. I get off the show and I make up an audio podcast. Subscribe yeah. to our channel and turn on all post notifications. And we're going to get this fine fellow back here very, very soon. Julie, thank you for That's helping me cool. work this out tonight. We'll be in touch. And until next time, everybody. Cheers. Thanks again for tuning in to Inside the Gilliverse with Eric Broadbent. Be sure to check back each week for more great discussions and interviews with cast and crew from Breaking Bad El Camino and Better Call Saul. Please like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends.